In this video, I want to talk about confirmatory factor analysis models for analyzing multi-trade, multi-method, or multi-rater data. What are these models good for? These models are used in research designs that use multiple reporters or other methods as sources for examining different traits or different constructs. And the purpose of this is to find out about convergent validity or agreement between different raters and different methods for different traits and also to study discriminant validity between different constructs. This approach was originally proposed by Campbell and Fisk who in 1959 published a very influential article on the multi-trait, multi-method matrix in the journal Psychological Bulletin. And so at the time we didn't have confirmatory factor analysis and so what they proposed was to analyze a correlation matrix, a so-called MTMM matrix, um, for a research design like that where you have multiple traits that are measured by multiple methods and then based on different types of correlations in such an MTMM matrix we can find out about convergent validity or agreement between methods and about discriminant validity or the degree to which different constructs are distinguishable and not too highly correlated. Nowadays we often use confirmatory factor analysis for analyzing MTMM data rather than looking at an MTMM correlation matrix. And the reason for that is that the MTMM correlation matrix has a number of limitations such as that we do not account for measurement error when we uh, look at an observed correlation matrix and that then um, a, co a comparison of correlations in this matrix and evaluation of those correlations can be difficult because they can be attenuated by measurement error. Also, some correlations might be attenuated more than others, which makes it really difficult to see whether there are differences in those correlations. Also, an MTMM matrix does not allow us to express trade and method effects by latent variables so that we could relate them to other variables. And so confirmatory factor analysis makes the analysis of MTMM data a lot more flexible. So here in this presentation, I want to show you some of the standard MTMM models for so-called single indicator designs where we have a single variable in each trade method combination. I will later on have a video as well on more advanced MTMM designs. But those are some models that are frequently used and I want to discuss them here in this presentation when starting with the model in the upper left corner. This is called the correlated traits, correlated uniqueness model. And the idea here is that we have a design with three traits and three methods. And so we have a variable for each trait method combination. For example, the first method could be self-report um, of different constructs. For example, self-reports of depression, anxiety, and a third trait such as maybe extraversion. And then the second method could be the parent report um, and the third method might be the teacher report. So we might have different raters or we might have other methods such as observations or we might have tests or something like that. In the correlated traits, correlated uniqueness model, each variable that is supposed to measure the same trait has a loading on a trait factor. So for example, the first indicator, the self-report, um, for depression, the parent report for depression and the teacher report for depression all have a loading on this trait factor and then we have a trait also for anxiety and one for extraversion. All traits can be correlated and those correlations are latent correlations that are corrected for measurement error and so they tell us something about discriminant validity between different traits. For example, the degree to which depression and anxiety represent separate constructs versus something that is very highly correlated. In this model, method effects are reflected in correlations between error variables, as you can see here. So those are all variables that share the same method, the self-report. And so there might be a bias, a shared bias across different traits for the self-report. And so that's reflected um, in these correlations between error variables that pertain to the same trait. You can see we have correlated errors within the self-report, we have correlated errors within the parent report, and we have correlated errors within the teacher report to take into account those method or rater biases or halo effects, so to say, that 
um, are due to the same method. That's, that's why this model is called a correlated traits, correlated uniqueness model. And it was proposed by David Kenny in 1976 and has since been used and studied a lot. Now, this model is a useful model and it's an, an elegant way, so to say, to in some ways at least, to account for method effects by simply letting those error variables be correlated and then we don't have to worry about the dimensionality of method effects because these error correlations can just be freely estimated. However, this model also has certain disadvantages because you have many of those error correlation parameters, especially as the design becomes larger and so those are a lot of free parameters that need to be estimated also this model precludes correlations between different methods because um, those correlations are not allowed across different methods so this implies that methods are uncorrelated and also in this model true method effects or actual method biases are confounded with measurement error. They're not separated from random measurement error and therefore we might see an inflation of the error variances in this model and we might see underestimation of reliabilities based on this model. Related to that issue, since method effects here are not separated from error, we can also not relate method effects to other variables because there's not a separate factor that would be a method factor representing method effects. So those limitations are some of those limitations are addressed by the next model here in the upper right hand corner that is called the correlated traits correlated methods model in the correlated traits correlated methods model that was first described to my knowledge by Karl Joris Cook in 1971 so actually before the correlated uniqueness model those correlated uniquenesses or correlated errors are replaced by method factors as you can see here on the left hand side so now we have a method factor that accounts for those uh, effects of self-report and we have a method factor that accounts for those effects of parent reports and we have a method factor for the teacher report as well and so now method effects are separated from measurement error and they are represented by latent variables latent method factors that can be correlated with one another and that could also be correlated with external variables and so that takes care of some of the issues with the correlated uniqueness model now unfortunately the correlated traits correlated methods model frequently causes issues in empirical applications which is related to the fact that this model isn't globally identified we have so many parameters in this model and we have um, correlated methods and correlated traits and so that becomes difficult to identify oftentimes in practice so this model often shows convergence problems or improper solutions and so therefore also um, other models have been proposed that address limitations of the correlated traits correlated methods model one model that has also been proposed um, so say as a simplification of the correlated traits correlated methods model is one with uncorrelated method factors that you can see here in the lower left hand corner where we have the same basic structure but now the method factors are not allowed to correlate so we have orthogonal so to say method factors or uncorrelated method factors and so under certain conditions this model is useful however it assumes that method effects do not generalize across different methods so for example there would not be there couldn't be a relation between parent reports and teacher reports or a shared bias between parents and teachers because those correlations here are not allowed in this model and that can be problematic especially when you have structurally different raters or structurally different methods where some of those methods might be more strongly related with one another so there might be a shared bias for example between mother and father reports relative to self reports because they have a shared parent perspective and then if we can't allow those um, shared biases to be represented in the model by a method factor correlation then we might um, end up with a model that isn't correct and so the next model addresses that issue in addition to addressing the over parameterization issue that we have in the correlated traits correlated methods model um, the model on the right hand side in the right hand side corner is called the correlated traits correlated methods minus one model it was proposed by michael eid in 2000 in psychometrica and so in this model, we have the same structure again, or a similar structure as in the correlated traits, correlated methods model, where we have 
um, trade as many trade factors as we have trades and we have correlated method factors. However, we have one minus one method factor less then we have different methods or rater types that therefore it's called correlated trades correlated methods minus one because we select one method as reference for example the self report for the reference method we do not include a method factor which then has the consequence that the trade factors are then defined based on the reference method so this would now be depression self report anxiety self report and um, extraversion self-report reflected here by these trade factors because the reference method does not have a method factor. The other methods do have a method factor and so those are factors that are defined as regression residual variables relative to the reference trade factors. So they reflect residual variance in the non-reference methods that cannot be explained by a linear regression on the reference method. And so therefore they have a clear meaning as residual factors accounting for residual variance and they can also be correlated and this, this correlation makes sense. So for example, if we had a design with self reports as reference and then mother reports as method two, father reports as method three, then it would make sense that mother and father reports are correlated above and beyond what they share with the self ratings because mothers and fathers probably have a shared parent perspective that deviates from the self perspective. And so this model makes a lot of sense when you have structurally different methods, structurally different raters that are not interchangeable, that provide um, different information because they have different rater perspectives. And so that is a model that often works very well in practice where we don't have a lot of convergence problems or improper solution problems and we have a clear interpretation of the trade and method factors. Now one issue of course with the correlated trades, correlated methods minus one model is that we have to select a reference method and a lot of um, people don't know how to select the reference method. So that is typically easy or relatively easy when you have structurally different methods where one method is a gold standard or a method that is particularly relevant for measuring the construct. For example, when you measure something like anxiety and depression, then probably the self-report is a good choice for the reference method unless you have very young children that where it might be difficult. But if you have older individuals, then they might know best about how depressed they feel or how anxious they feel. And then the other ratings would serve as non-reference methods because they're not as close to those constructs. In other cases, you might have an objective test maybe that you could use as reference method or you have a method that is frequently, most frequently used in the field that is most um, trusted, maybe already has been shown to be a valid method or a very reliable method that you trust most. And then though that method would be contrasted against the other methods. I hope in this presentation I gave you an overview of the idea of MTMM modeling with confirmatory factor analysis. I offer a longer workshop on CFA MTMM models that you can find in the description. Also please subscribe to this channel and if you like leave a comment and tell me what else you would like to know or whether you have any comments on those types of methods and I'll see you next time.